What's happening YouTube? Thanks for tuning back into the channel today right here with me, the Rust Belt Mechanic. So we got the Duramax sitting back here in the background again, and we're not going to be fixing anything today, but we're going to be going over the one year, slightly over one year anniversary of putting the Raptor bed liner on the truck. Lots of people have been asking a lot of questions about it, so I kind of wanted to rehash it. I'm getting tired of hitting copy and paste for that old video, but it's up over 111,000 views now, which is kind of crazy. I never expected expected it to get that kind of views on it. So we're going to go over it, see what I think about it, how well it's held up, and see what you guys think on how well the Raptor Bedliner is done. So pretty much one year ago, I decided to do the bed liner here on the truck. I wanted to do the entire truck. So what did I do? At first, I didn't decide to go with the Raptor bed liner. First thing I did, I went down to a company called Linex who does uh, professional spray on bed liners. Uh, they also do whole vehicles and everything. It's pretty much a totally different process from what this one is, but it seems to be a lot thicker and a little bit more, I guess, robust at the time is what I kind of thought. Went and got a quote on that one and they ended up quoting me almost five grand to do this truck. 4,800 bucks is what they quoted me to do this entire truck in this color, exactly how we see it, but in their version of the Line X, their kind of liner to it. So the difference in that one is they theirs is more of a rubberized material. It's sprayed on at a couple hundred degrees, so they have to have these specialty guns, specialty equipment. Uh, it's shot in a special booth for it, so I can see why this stuff is going to cost so much. Whereas this one, it is chemical process. It's hardened with a hardener put into the uh, mixture and it is hardened by itself over the next 48 hours after you spray it on. So I like that about it and the cost of it. Tell you the truth, this whole cost right here with materials is only gonna cost right around 300, 320 bucks. And that's out the door, done. That's your materials spent on this truck. So if you do it yourself and you're able to do that kind of stuff without the help of anyone, it's a really cheap, great option. So what we ended up doing, uh, we used three kits from this thing. We ended up buying it on Amazon. So it's about 100 bucks a kit, 300 bucks total in kits. Three kits, 12 pints to be able to paint this entire truck. What we ended up doing, we tested it on a whole lot of surfaces. And I definitely recommend that you guys do that one because of the different kind of textures and tendencies that you might get in spraying at different distances, different pressures, things like that. So what I ended up doing with ours or with mine is we ended up shooting quite a few different things and we ended up deciding on shooting it at 80 PSI. Now the instructions do not tell you to shoot it at that pressure. They tell you to test on a whole different things, but that's not what they tell you. So in each bottle, you guys are going to put into the bottle your tint. I ended up doing this one the exact same color uh, that the truck was before so I didn't have to do the door jams or in between the cab and the bed. Uh, all those silly little areas like that I didn't have to do. So I ended up doing uh, that one you add two ounces of tint to each bottle and that's just standard paint tin. Just regular stuff that you guys can get at any paint store. Two ounces of that in it. We ended up adding two ounces of urethane thinner, just a standard urethane thinner that they also have at a paint shop into each bottle. Uh, that just to give it a nice, even consistent tone. If we didn't put that urethane thinner into it, it ended up being a little bit more globby, a little bit thicker, uh, took a little bit harder, longer to harden. So uh, we ended up using some of the thinner for that one. And then um, just ended up shooting it at like 80 PSI instead of, I think the bottle recommended like 45 to 50, somewhere around there. I liked how it looked, the nice even consistency at shooting it at this pressure. At that point, we taped off the truck just like you would any other paint job. Uh, we taped off all the wheel wells, the wheels, everything underneath of it, uh, inside the hood area. Uh, we, did, we didn't do any of the jams, so I didn't have to worry about any of that or taping off the interior portion and not in between the cab of the bed, so we didn't have to pull that one either. Got all of that ready for paint and we did put a scuff onto it. We used like uh, 80 grit and then 130 grit to give it somewhat of a, uh, 
I guess, material to be able to stick onto. Um, now, the other thing that I would recommend in some harder areas, uh, Raptor U-Pole does sell a version of a, like a uh, adhesion promoter. Uh, it comes in a little spray can, rattles on. Uh, I would recommend to do that if you guys aren't able to get into all those little nooks, crannies, and crevices. Uh, anything to help the promotion of the adhesion into those nooks and crannies, definitely recommend that one. Then the kit itself does come with the actual gun. Each one of those bottles that you put in, uh, you put all your stuff into it, shake it all up really good for at least two minutes, and then the gun actually comes in the kit. The bottle attaches into the gun, uh, your air nozzle attaches onto that, and you're shooting. We ended up shooting at between 14 to 16 inches away. We like to stick right around 14 inches away from the material, from the surface. Nice even strokes, just as you would be painting a car. Uh, nice even lines all the way across, uh, overlapping right around 20%, 20, 25% overlap as we were going down on the panels. Uh, that ended up turning out just about the best for what I was looking for in this one. Uh, let's look and see at the consistency of how it still turned out. Yeah, I had the hood up. I had a couple people in the shop oogling over the HSP stuff that we did. They saw the last video that I did showing a lot of their, their piping stuff and how well it turned out. So, yep, there was that one. But we're going to see if we can get some good close-in shots and see how well this durable liner is holding up. This is the Raptor bed liner. We ended up spraying this one just over a year ago now. So you guys can see how well everything is held up. Not really much of any chips or anything like that. So I'm going to point out here real quick, just because I know where it's at and this is what happened. My son hit it with the handle of a baseball bat and it's in a really indiscreet area. And this is the only thing that's been chipped so far is right there in that area. So I am super happy about that. You can't even see it when you're standing up here at a regular level. Yeah, you can't tell. The only other negative thing that I ended up coming up with after this year is right in here at the edge of the bed. Let's look at this one. Right along here in this area, you guys can see how that has gone from the Raptor liner to the chipped off area where you guys can see kind of shiny paint in there. And that's where I'm talking about that adhesion promoter. Any of these surfaces that get really hard hit or anything, make sure the scuffing is really good and then also apply some of that adhesion promoter into some of those areas. Over here on the other side, you can see where it kind of has been doing the same thing, but not nearly as much. And I'm not really worried about it because I'm also going to be uh, doing a fresh spray in liner here in the whole bed of the truck. I've got some areas here on the bottom, you guys can see there, that's kind of uh, coming up, some thinner areas here on the tailgate. So I think we're gonna do the entire bed liner on top of it. And at that same time, I think I'm gonna do the upper rails, the black color, out to the edge of what would be a normal rail cover. We'll be doing that one in the liner. So the other thing, when I did the mirrors and the suspension parts, I showed you that I did the Raptor liner on these parts as well when I did them, but I, what I didn't say was that we actually ended up spraying these a little bit different. Uh, you guys know with the stamps game with these trucks, these wheels stick out quite a long ways outside of the wheel wells here. So they're throwing stuff up all the time. So I wanted to give these a little bit better chance of not having so much rock chips. So we sprayed these a little bit different. Let's look a little bit closer compared to the other paint job. So now you guys can see the standard texture here on the entire truck. And then you look up here at the texture on the mirrors. And the suspension parts are gonna be just like this one. You see, it's not as, I guess, thin coarse. It's a little bit larger grains. That's because this stuff is about twice as thick. We did two coats on this one, and we didn't put any thinner on this one either. I wanted to give this the thicker coat to it. I, I don't know if it's almost got a little bit more sheen to it, but that could be because of the consistency. It's not so much as the, the sandpaper smaller grain consistency like the rest of the bed is, or the rest of the truck is, but it's more of this, I guess, smooth 
texture to it. it it's kind of hard without actually feeling and seeing it but like i said this stuff is about twice as thick as everything else on the truck and i did that in these two areas because this is the biggest hit spots on the entire truck between that and then the suspension parts down underneath as well so if we can get a look at that one the bds suspension parts they are also done in that thicker style because you know big hits all the time from little rocks and they they go through a lot more abuse and even there on the suspension parts no chips nothing at all yet coming off of those so i am super impressed by that one and also on these mirrors we're not seeing any chips on this one yet either top and bottom it's it's all pretty even on there i i'm really impressed with how well those have held up the other question that i get most often is wow why would you do that it adds so much weight to your truck really now let's just think about the actual physical properties of this. When all of this Raptor liner gets shipped to you, it's like 27 pounds, right around there for the three different kits shipped, even with all the packaging and everything, the cans that everything comes in, it's like 27 pounds. So with that and the two ounces in each bottle of the, um, the thinner and the tint that you put into each one of these cans, um, it's not really adding anything over what that normal weight would be. So on average, I think you're adding about 30 pounds of weight to the truck. Not going to really affect anything in the way of fuel mileage due to weight on this vehicle. Aerodynamics wise, I'm not an aero scientist or anything like that. So I'm not going to be able to provide any kind of information on airflow over this kind of stuff. Obviously it's going to be a little bit uh, rougher texture and air wouldn't go through it as well. But again, when you're talking about an 8,000 pound, 7,000 pound truck, don't think it's going to really affect anything that, that much or anything to measure for that amount. Bear me with me guys, it's like 95 degrees and yeah, I'm sweating. I'm not somebody who actually sweats amazingly, but I'm now sweating. It's like humid as all get out. It rained and it's like 97 degrees still. So going into the last question that I get most often is how do you clean this? Isn't it such a pain in the butt to clean? Really? No, it's not. It is different. It definitely is different. So the biggest thing that I have to you guys is to say on the prep side of things. Obviously, if you guys any, get any kind of bug things on the front, you guys are going to have a lot more in the way of things to clean up. Uh, the bug splatters, they do get, tend to get into those grooves, but they are much easier managed if you guys use some kind of spray into the actual paint ahead of time. When you do that, it actually creates a, somewhat of a barrier. What I like to use is like a Lucas Quick Mist or something along those lines, just an easy spray on wax that you can spray on before truck shows or after you get done um, cleaning the truck, something along those lines. When you do that, it leaves a nice even little coat on there and it's gonna make it really easy for you to clean off all the bugs, the splatter, the road debris, anything that you might run into on the front end it ends up coming off quite a bit easier. Now in the way of, we'll say aerial debris or bird turds, you might call it. When you get a bird turd here on the hood and just like today, it's like the middle of summer, it's like 97 degrees out and that thing bakes in because you don't have time to wash this thing every week, every other week, whatever it is. So it ends up baking into those things. So you might end up getting a couple of little stains into it. Now that's not something you need to worry about. It's not gonna be there permanently, but there are some things that you do use and I would say not to use. The biggest thing that I would say not to use was be like the magic erasers. I've seen it on other channels and that's why I've never done it to mine, but I would recommend that you guys not do that from what I've seen. It takes a lot of the shine away from the vehicle. Uh, those magic erasers are pretty much like little sanding discs, really fine, and it actually makes little scuffs within the surface of it, so it makes it look even more dull than it already is, which that's something you guys don't want, and I would say that might um, hinder in the UV department when it 
comes time to uh, talking about the diminishing of the paint quality or dulling over time, you don't want to see that one either. The stuff that I use most often is actually just simple green. I get it in a concentrated form for work of the shop, I dilute it down and I'll put it in a spray bottle. Any of those big old bird turds that get baked into it, you spray them onto the spot, wipe them in with a rag, maybe a little bit of a sponge. Sponges seem to get down into the crevices a little bit easier. Uh, work it in there and then end up spraying it off and it all comes out just fine. It doesn't leave any kind of extra residue to it. It doesn't take down the shine. It doesn't make it fade. I've not had any issues while using that and I've definitely used a lot of Simple Green on this because there's a lot of birds that like to shit on this big old truck. So we've covered most of the questions that I have gotten from you and all of the answers that I've been able to hopefully give to you as well. We've gone through those and then pretty much the last thing is why would you do that to your truck? Why, that's the most comments that I ever get on that video. Now this paint job is one of the things where you either love it or you absolutely hate it. And if that definitely holds true on the internet. Now in person, it's a whole different ball game. I like taking this truck to truck shows all the time. I do it probably about every other weekend. I like getting out. I like enjoying and talking to people about it as well. So when I get the chance to talk to people about it, I'm going to guarantee you this thing gets more looks and more conversation about the paint job on it than we'll say most other 69 Camaros with perfect $15,000 paint jobs to them because this is more unique. I'm not gonna say it's one of a kind, I'm not gonna say I'm the only one who's ever done it because I'm not, but in this area, you definitely don't see it. The guys who have actually done this one across the street uh, helped me do this paint job. They've done like five or six more of these since then just because they saw the video and they wanted to know where I got it done. So there are a couple other ones even around in this area that are cruising around with uh, the Raptor liner jobs just like this one. But in general, at these car shows, there is so much more conversation in the way of how we sprayed it, uh, what kind of stuff we used, is it Line X, what is it? So I enjoy being able to talk to people and that is one of the biggest conversation starters about this truck. Not, not the seven inch suspension, not lifted, sitting on 37s, not the big old loud diesel exhaust, it's the paint job. It's the Raptor liner that draws people in 90% of the time. Well, that's about all the information that I have for you today here on the Raptor bed liner that I've put onto my truck. If you guys have any other questions, comments, or anything about that, I am more than happy to answer any of those that I have. Uh, if you guys have an opinion that says, I hate your truck and I hate what it looks like, that's good for you. I've, I hear it quite often. You feel free to put that in there if you want, but trust me, I've heard it a time or two. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on that bell notification for when I come out with awesome new content like this one. Got all kinds of cool stuff coming up as well as some tool content. We've got some more Duramax things coming up here in the near future. I'm talking with a couple of companies, so really exciting things. Make sure you stay tuned in for that. Appreciate it. Thank you, and as always, you guys stay awesome.